Thank you for spending a little bit of time with us today. What we are looking at is analysis services monitoring overview. Um, analysis services has several different tools to help you monitor and tune the performance of your servers, even also your queries potentially. The choice of the tool depends on the type of monitoring or tuning to be done and the particular events you want to monitor because the events that you can monitor are very extensive uh, in terms of number, in terms of classes. Uh, in this webinar, we're going to explore several different monitoring tools that range from monitoring the health of Azure Analysis Services to profiling data on the SQL Server Analysis Services tabular specifically today. Um, and these events will enable you to monitor the server and potentially your database activity. The monitoring and uncovering of the information that is specific to Azure Analysis Services and Analysis Services tabular, multidimensional instances itself is, and its associated techniques like profiler traces, X events, DMV queries, et cetera, are really extensive. And more than likely, after doing the research I've done on this and on this topic, we're probably going to end up doing another one that's more specific to multidimensional because that is a different and unique animal when it term, comes terms to the underlying engine, uh, air quotes, the internals, uh, as opposed to, say, your tabular models with Azure Analysis Services and tabular on-prem. So we will be diving in and looking at a few of the monitoring options available today. Again, thank you for your time. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a principal consultant with Pragmatic Works. Uh, I'm an IT professional with over 20 years of experience uh, with managing consulting software development, data integration architecture, data warehousing, uh, and BI development projects. Uh, the focus of my work now is I work in a what they you know as a principal consultant at Pragmatic Works. Prior to uh, January 2020, I was a principal consultant, and the principal consultant role was a dual purpose role. I would assist our sales team or sales uh, in general to help solution architect solutions for customers. They would give us. Uh, a call saying, hey, I have this problem I need to solve, and, and they would work, and I would work with them in solutioning and architecting a solution along with our pre our sales team to do that. Uh, as I said, it was a dual role but, uh, as of January 2020, where I was also doing the technical implementation of a lot of these types of solutions that I was uh, providing. Now, with, in the role of principal consultant, I primarily serve as a solutions architect on the pre-sales pre side of things, but uh, that that ranges from anywhere from any of your standard uh, Microsoft SQL Server stack, which is a traditional data warehousing, the BI stuff, and all the way into Azure. As you know, we're in the Azure world now. Uh, I've been at Pragmatic Works approaching six years, and when it was a thing, I was went through the Maestro program at, at Microsoft back in 2011, and that was focused on multidimensional, uh, particularly analyzing and uh, understanding how Perfmon counters correlate to the internals of analysis services multidimensional. So with that being said, you can uh, look up these places for me. I'm on Twitter, at, on LinkedIn, I do blog and I do my email there is afaultner at pragmaticworks.com. All right, so we talked about this and we're looking into this. And as I said, we we're going to use um, several different tools to help monitor analysis services and tune the performance of the servers, potentially even look at how we may perform. Uh, query analysis and maybe improve those query analysis. Now there are about seven to eight different monitoring tools of options available. Again, as I said, it depends on what you're doing or what platform you're focused on, whether it's multidimensional or tabular or Azure analysis services to which monitoring tool will apply. The two that are asterisked at the bottom of the performance counter and log operations, those are primarily and only available to analysis services multidimensional. As I mentioned, we're probably not going to be focused on that specifically today, 
but I will be working towards a, another presentation where we talk about performance counters, looking at how you use Perfmon and look at the log operations using Perfmon counters and uh, those types of things. So with that being said, each tool uh, offers different things. So for example, Azure Metrics Explorer is really a free tool in the Azure portal to help you monitor the performance and health of your Azure Analysis Services services servers. Um, Azure Diagnostic Logs, which is another one that these are two we will be looking at today uh, in specific demos. Uh, you can use Azure Diagnostic Logs to monitor and log at Azure Analysis Services server performance. Uh, you can send the logs to Azure Storage, stream them to Azure Event Hubs, and import them uh, into Azure Monitor Logs. Another one that we will be looking at today is SQL Server Profiler. Now, this is kind of the old school thing, way of doing things, and I come from the old school way of doing it from multidimensional. So I kind of like the SQL Server Profiler trace. One of the reasons I like it is it allows me to capture those results to a table so that I can analyze and query them later. But simply put, uh, SQL Server Profiler tracks engine process events and also captures data about those events, enabling, again, to monitor server and database activity. We will not be looking at extended events, but again, extended events are light, is a lightweight tracing and performance monitoring system uh, that uses very few system resources and making it an ideal tool for diagnosing problems on both production and test servers. One thing to, to note, and we'll talk a bit more about this, SQL Server Profiler can be uh, very heavyweight, if you will, because it, can, it does require system resources to, to uh, handle that and write that information out. We will also be looking at trace events today. It follows the activity of an instance, analysis service instance by, again, capturing, analyzing trace events generated by analysis services instances. Um, trace events are usually, are typically grouped so that you can uh, more easily find related trace events. Uh, DMVs, dynamic management views, these are just queries that return information about model objects, server operations, and server health. The query is based on SQL and, and is interfaced to a schema row sets. As I mentioned, performance counters are really uh, specific to analysis services multidimensional and really involves understanding how to use uh, Perfmon or perf Performance Monitor and that monitor, monitors the performance of an analysis service instance by using those performance counters. And then log operations, uh, again, this is more associated with analysis services multidimensional, and it logs uh, server notifications, errors, warnings to uh, a file on your file system called MS, MS, msmd serve.log file for each instance that you install on a server. So some of the examples we have here on the screen here is um, on the center here, we look at, we're kind of looking at what might be a profiler trace results from a SQL Server Analysis Services tabular. This, in, in this case, it was my local instance of SQL Server tabular, so an air quotes on-prem instance. Uh, the, the results were captured into a SQL Server table so that I can analyze those results later. It also uh, captures the data about those events, so enabling you to monitor the server and database activity. The lower right is essentially how I'm setting up the profiler trace. It's a, here's the configuration of the properties that will allow me to capture the data shown in the SQL profiler trace uh, here. So in the upper right, we've got um, Azure Analysis Services with, with integration with the Azure Monitor. And uh, again, we're looking at Azure Analysis Services server performance, specifically Azure. And you can send logs to Azure Storage, you can stream in Azure Event Hubs and export them to uh, Azure Monitor Logs. What we will be looking at today is how I specifically use log analytics and Custo or uh, K KQL to analyze that data. And I can potentially export that KQL query out to Power BI and analyze that. If we're feeling lucky today, we'll do that. Um, and again, in the upper center left here, we're again, Azure Metrics Explorer and 
those really are designed to monitor memory and CPU usage, uh, number of client connections, and query resource consumption. So uh, Azure Analysis Services uses the same monitoring framework as most other Azure services and is a free tool in the Azure portal to help you monitor the performance and health of your Azure Analysis Services server. So one of the things that I always like to bring up, because I don't know how many people know this or understand this, but it's important to understand how the analysis services engines process a query. And in this case, what we have is an MDX query comes in, and this is for analysis services multidimensional. And it, what happens is, is an MDX query comes into the query parser and, and within that query parser, it has an, what they call an XMLA listener, which accepts requests, parses the request and passes along to the query processor for a query execution. So it's validating that the MDX query is actually a well-formed MDX query, a correct query, no syntax, syntax er errors. Once we get into the, uh, get into the query processor, uh, upon receiving the validated and parsed query from the query processor, the query processor prepares an execution plan, which dictates how the requested result will be provided from the queue data and calculations. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen this. Uh, if you've ever analyzed the data from particularly a multidimensional, is the multidimensional uh, engine will start looking at how it can essentially answer the query. So you may think that you're issuing, issuing a single MDX query, but the engine in, in under not underlying this will actually distribute that query, parse that query, actually potentially send it uh, down multiple paths, breaking that query up to ultimately provide an answer back to what the MDX query is asking for. So uh, when the query processor prepares the execution plan, it dictates how the requested results will be provided from the cube data and the calculations used. The query processor caches the calculation and then it moves down to the storage engine. And the storage engine responds to sub cube data or a subset of data. So I like to think of a multidimensional cube like a Rubik's cube. We have the primary cube and then in in that cube, we have subcubes or slices of the cube. And when that request is generated by the query processor, it first checks if the requested subcube data is already available in the storage engine. If it's not there, uh, if it's yes, it will answer the query from there. And you'll understand what the caching allows us to do. If you run queries against uh, multidimensional, it will actually store the results and catch. Ideally, that's where you want your queries to be answered from in, in these uh, storage engine caches because it's much faster. If you've ever heard of the term warming the cache, when you execute a query, it warms that cache, storing the result sets of that query in the storage engine. Uh, so with these things here, when we go into the storage engine, it re again responds to the subcube. If if it's not in the storage engine, what happens is, is you get down to this lower part here, which are actually where your files are on disk. So you start getting high I/O type things, high uh, high memory usage when you get into this. So if there was no cache, it would come all the way through trying to answer this query based on the files that have been written to disk. That's the multi-dimensional version. Here is your tabular query processing engine. And really, uh, tabular models can be queried by using both MDX and DAX queries. Uh, this diagram explains the underlying query processing architecture of analysis services when running in tabular mode. So uh, DAX queries can reference DAX calculations. Uh, these DAX calculations can reside in the model in the session or in the defined clause of a DAX query. Um, for example, you can have Power View reports, Power Query reports, Power BI reports to generate DAX queries to gather data to visualize. Now, one thing that happens with if you're using Excel against a tabular model, it actually issues an MDX query 
it resolves those as MDX calculations. Then it looks to see if it's got the equivalent DAX. It passes that the VertiBack engine and then returns the queries back or it returns the query results back. Um, most of the time, because we're always in memory on a tabular model, you're never getting into you know I/O here. You're not reading anything from disk. So all of this VertiPack piece is really what is the in-memory piece of the VertiPack engine. So talking a little bit more about uh, some of the techniques that we're wanting to look at is that we're going to be looking at a SQL, SQL Server Profiler trace. And with uh, SQL Server Profiler, it's installed with SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. Again, it tracks engine process events such as the start of a batch or a transaction. It captures data about those events, enabling you to monitor server and database activity. For example, user queries or login activity. You can capture profiler data to a SQL Server table or file for later analysis, which in our demo, we will do this. And you can also replay the events captured on the same or other analysis services and see what actually happened. Uh, you can either replay the events in real time or on a step-by-step -step basis. And it's also useful to run the trace events along with performance counters on the same instance. So the profiler can correlate these two based on time and display. And you can uh, basically display them, like say, for example, on a single timeline to understand what day potentially a uh, query went spiked on you. Uh, or even I've seen some reporting that'll get down to the half hour or 15 minute increments to see you know, what happened during a course of a day in terms of the trace. Uh, trace events will give you more details why performance counters give you an aggregate view. And this really here applies to analysis services tabular. You can do trace events on multidimensionals. You can use uh, profiler trace on multidimensional, as well as you can use it on Azure analysis services. And I have not done this, but I've, I've read and researched that you can actually do this on Power BI Premium as well. So when we're using the profiler, we're using this to monitor performance of the instance of the analysis services engine. Uh, we can do debug query statements, identify queries that are running slowly, uh, test query statements in the development phase of a project uh, by, for example, stepping through them, uh, troubleshoot problems by capturing certain events on, on a production system and trying to replay them on a test system. This is this that approach is uh, useful for testing the debugging purpose and lets users to continue to use the production system without you interfering with that. Um, it also will uh, audit and review act activity on that instance. So a security administrator can review any one of the audit events. So for example, log in, log out, failed logins. This includes a successful failure of the logins, and we can try and. Uh, successful failure of permissions and accessing statements and objects. You can also display data about captured events to the screen. As I also said, you can also save that data to a table. Now, one thing that's key to note about this is that from a permissions perspective, for Azure Analysis Services and SQL Server Analysis Services, you must be a member of the Analysis Services Server Administrator role, uh, can view all server and database traces. Users not in the server administrator role can view traces only for databases in which they are a member of the database administrator role. Uh, for Power BI Premium, users can view traces only for databases in which they are a member of the database administrator role. And only those events that require database administ uh, administrator permissions are available. And trace events requiring server administration permissions are not available for a Power BI Premium workspace. A uh, couple things that remember and on from using SQL Profiler Trace, uh, from a Power BI Premium perspective, database events available for the workspace, so that's the only thing it will capture. You can do multiple traces simultaneously. A multiple connection can be tracked in the same trace. If 
for example, a login uh, event is tra traced, passwords are not revealed, they're usually, they are replaced by asterisks, and optimal performance. So today I'm going to be doing kind of the whole enchilada, I'm gonna be selecting all of them. However, that's not what I recommend to do if you're actually lo looking for specifics. You wanna focus on the events that you're most interested in. So if you're interested in query performance, you're gonna be looking at your query, um, query class and, and the classes within it and events in that. Login, security, those types of things there are different classes that are provided. So this is where we get to this. And uh, trace events are what's generated by, by any Azure Analysis Service or SSAS tabular multidimensional instance. Each trace event has an event ID, an event name, an event description. And the trace events come with, with uh, categories. So a category in this case, for example, would be command events. And within that, there are two classes that allow you to further diagnose any uh, issues or anything like that. There are roughly uh, 70 classes available. But again, depending on what your need is, uh, let's say a query processing is what you're after and wanting to look at. You can look at query processing. There's diff 22 different classes there. Also queries begin and end. Is another one, those are the event classes within this. All right, so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be trying to dive into now doing some, some tracing. And the first thing I want to kind of call out to everybody is I've got an instance of SQL Server, so just a SQL Server 2016, these databases that I'm going to be using here is the test DW. And what I'm going to be targeting here is I'm actually going to do a, two traces. One trace is going to be an SSAS tabular trace, which is on-prem, which is this guy right here. And I'm also going to do an Azure Analysis Services trace, which is here. This is my instance of Azure Analysis Services. So in doing so, I want to walk through if you've never seen a profile of trace, I'm going to walk through that step of how you configure uh, an analysis services trace uh, on a tabular. And in this case, we're going to say this is our on-prem instance. So to do that, I just go to the tools menu, I'm going to SQL Server Profiler. And what it's going to do is going to launch this screen saying, okay, you're targeting analysis services. This is the server you're um, targeting. I'm going to use my Windows authentication. I'm going to say connect. This allows me to now connect to that to start configuring the trace properties. I'm just going to name it. And as I said to you before, that I want to save my results to a table. And I'm going to go ahead and connect to my database engine. And as I also mentioned, we're going to be doing our test DW. And by default, what it does is it will say, hey, I'll log it to a table based on the name that you traced it or provided it in the trace name. I've already got a table that I want to target. And what this will do is if I say OK to this, it can say, hey, you already have that table. Do you really want to do this and overwrite this? I'm also moving the data from my SSAS tabular trace table to a history table so that I can keep historic history. Because what is going to happen is if I target this table over and over, it will essentially drop and recreate the table and then write the trace data that I'm going to be setting up. So I'm going to respond yes to this. And I'm going to come through. And as I said, I would not recommend doing this, meaning capturing all, all of these different traces. I would be uh, more specific to what you're targeting. But I, for demonstration pur purposes, I want to show this. I'm going to go through and see all the ones that I've got here. Make sure I've got everything I want. Okay. So in this case, when I run this trace, I am going to be using an SQL, or excuse me, Excel, which is connected to my SSAS tabular instance. And when I start issuing queries through my Excel application here connected to the tabular model, it'll start 
logging these trace events. So I'm going to run that, let that start. We'll see that. Okay. So now we've got our trace running, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to start just adding stuff. And as this is doing this, what we'll see here is that this is starting to track those events and just get kind of a robust set of data. I'm going to add a few things here. I want to say I want to add the gender for my customer dimension. I want to see the calendar year that's based on that. And let's see, sales territory, I want to put that in my country or my filters. That way I can do some filtering. And on this, it'll allow me to select all that. I can do United Kingdom, Germany, and it'll start issuing that query. And as, you see, as you'll see, we're starting to still log that. Now, if I want to continue with this, I can continue doing this some more. If I, I choose to, is again, it'll still answer all those, all those queries and writing that query to the trace. Now, once I stop the trace, that trace is complete. It's no longer running. I could resume it if I chose to. I can re, you know, restart it to, to allow and do that. But for now, I'm not going to uh, restart the trace. I'm going to close that. And to show that we have got that kind of tag or trace data here. Oh, that's awesome. That's what happened yesterday. So in other words, I'm going to select nothing like the live demo fail to show that it actually did log the data. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So it didn't log this, this data here. So this is the results of my trace. And usually the reason this failed is because I didn't necessarily get all the, all the data events I wanted selected based on my demo. But long story short is, is that I actually can come in here and once I start evaluating things, I can actually evaluate this trace data in uh, Power BI. And you know, over the last several days in preparing for this, I've done some things to show that I've got the event class name. So for example, my discover end, those are telling me that my total query in milliseconds is 53. Uh, I'm doing very well in terms of query time, so I'm sub second in terms of response time. Uh, my total events, that's total events, meaning the total number of records in the data that actually contribute to this. I can actually look at all uh, different things as well. Uh, another one that's important to note is query ends. This is showing uh, the actual query end when the uh, query was executed on the query begin class. Now we're monitoring the query end. I can show you that there's 51 total events that are contributing to that. And my co total query time in, uh, that's total query time across 51 events. My uh, total query time is about half a second and the total CPU time. So it gives you does this type of thing to and analyze the data. Now, this is kind of a, I would call this a pre-baked or a, a self-solution. There are software vendors out there that will provide you extensive capability. I think Century One is one of the companies that have a lot of tools around monitoring this type of stuff. But what I've chosen to do here and chosen to show is that if you can capture the data with profiler traces, you capture the data uh, and bring it into Power BI, for example, uh, and I'll show you just kind of the basic model here. I've got my trace data. I've got my event classes here as dimensions, and I've got several things here as potential dimensions here. So if I want to look at my application name, for example, I could. Um, and if I wanted to drill down into this more specifically, I can work, work on uh, say 512's data and it shows me what databases are responding and if I click that one it shows me that this makes up about 20, 2500 events over on 512. It shows me overall what these are. If I wanted to now get back to very specifically the query end piece of this, I, this is telling me that across my instances here that I'm, my queries are performing pretty well. 
And more than likely, because those queries have run more than once, it's also cached. So it's not having to repeat itself and rewrite the query and essentially recreate the execution plan in this case. So there, there's that one. Now, I also mentioned that we can do the same thing with Azure Analysis Services. So I'm going to come back over here and do the same thing with uh, my Azure instance. And it's the same process. I can do a SQL profiler. Now, the one thing it does, uh, does happen is that you do have to give it a few minutes to go out and communicate with your Azure uh, Analysis Services incidents. And at Pragmatic Works, we have multi-factor authentication um, implemented. So I have to go through this uh, step each time. I have to get my text, I have to get my code so that I, it's making sure that I'm who I say I am. And in this case, let me see what my code is. And what this does is it does take a minute to connect, you know, getting out to Azure. And again, it brings up the same type, type uh, screen here. Profiler, and I want to save to table, uh, and again, I'm going to say connect to the, my PwC laptop instance, and we are going to our test EW database. I could put that to profiler. I'm actually going to try this again with my AAS trace, say OK. It's going to prompt me again saying that table already exists. If you want to write it, I'll say yes. Now, I had to Again, I don't recommend doing this this way and selecting all these events, but for the demo purposes, I want to show this and capture all these events. Unfortunately, there's no way to really say, I want to select all because they do that by default because they don't want you doing this uh, technically. I'm trying to make this quick. It'd be nice if they would let you just select by category, but that's not something that they let you do. And what this is doing is it's capturing all these events. And if you notice across the top here, these are the uh, columns that will be come, coming back in your trace, the, the columns that will actually be in the table that you're writing to. So once you configure this and it recreates the table, it basically takes this information and is generating I, and behind the scenes the T-SQL or the DDL statement that will actually define the table that you're wanting to create as a result of capturing this trace data. Uh, and what we will be doing here is I want to show a different example about using Power BI against Azure Analysis Services in capturing this data. So I'm going to run this guy. And here's my Power BI solution that's connected to Azure Analysis Services. So if I wanted to start issuing queries against that, if I still select bytes, for example, it's going to filter uh, potentially on my category name. I can see if I want to France, if I want Germany, uh, I want United Kingdom, I can see that. I can also look at components if that's there. I can move this out. Again, it's about just issuing queries here. And what I want to show is that it's actually issuing the queries and it's telling me what the application is, so on and so forth. It's creating what database I'm hitting, what event subclasses we're hitting, lots of information. One of the things that's actually key is that this text data is also telling you what is actually happening behind the scenes. So this is telling you here is a query, for example, that was issued uh, while you're running that, and it's still running and still doing that, and it just released that lock. So I am going to go ahead and stop this trace and come back out here to my SQL Server. And hopefully this, again, will be cooperating if I've captured all the events the way I've planned to. 
Yeah. So I'm going to load this to load that into my historical table. And what happens here is if I run back into this and I do a refresh, hopefully no errors here. And you'll notice that some of these event counts will start to um, increase from the previous one. So of course, let me come back out. It's now refreshing. And say, for example, today I've got 2,733 queries. My average query time is here. If I want to look at, say, query process events, uh, there were a total of 38 events, and my total query time in seconds is uh, 33, so less than half a second to resolve those queries totally. So that's kind of an example of using Profiler Trace against both Analysis Services Tabular and uh, on-prem and also an Azure Analysis Services instance in this case. So we come back out to here. We've copied that. So we've looked at the profiler traces. Again, we looked at how to configure a tabular on-prem and an analysis services trace. We saved those trace events to a SQL Server table. Uh, on the on-prem version of it, we used Excel to query it. On the analysis services side, we used Power BI. We observed some of the trace events. We showed the results of the trace events, and we used Power BI to evaluate the trace data. So it steps us into monitoring Azure Analysis Services log analytics. Real quickly, you can do this uh, again through Azure. Uh, monitor and really, you know, for analysis service, it's really important to monitor how your servers are doing. Uh, I've been working with analysis services for a lot of years. Uh, a lot of it's been mostly, uh, you know, the multi dimensional tabular stuff on prem, but I've also done several uh, several engagements where we delivered analysis services, uh, Azure analysis services. Uh, solutions and it really is important that you're looking at and monitoring things in this case we're going to be looking at monitoring azure analysis services using log analytics and you know i i grew up on the profiler option and the perfmon option because the background had come from through the maestro program they use perfmon they use profiler traces they used a lot of different tools like that kind of the older tools but within azure log analytics you use uh, CUSO queries uh, for the log queries and uh, Azure Monitor Logs is based on Azure Data Explorer and the log query is often written using the KQL language or CUSO query language and it's really a, a language that I'm starting to learn and, and getting more comfortable with and it's really easy to pick up without uh, any real significant uh, training in it you know you can look at a few examples and kind of be off and running and all data is collected in the monitor logs is available to retrieve uh, and an analyze the log queries and when you build a query you start by determining which tables have the data that you're looking for so you should have at least a basic understanding of how the data azure monitor logs is structured so there's a couple of things about uh, log analytics queries. Uh, the schema is a collection of tables grouped by a logical category. Uh, you usually look at, for example, the log management category contains windows and syslog events, performance data, and agent heartbeats. Uh, the schema tables appear on the tables tab of the log analytics workspace. And for example, the event table contains text about columns like computer and numerical columns like event category. So real quickly, when we look at this demo, the one thing I want to do is now I'm jumping over into my Azure instance here, and we're um, gonna come back to home here. And I have two areas that I really want us to look at today. I've got my Azure analysis services instance here, and I've got my log workspace. So I'm gonna go ahead here and look at this, just to show you, it's just a basic, uh, set up 
if I want to look at these, <clears throat> these individual items, I'm starting at the Azure Analysis Services instance. Now, if I want to go and look at how I'm set up with my diagnostics, I want to go to my diagnostic settings uh, category here under monitoring, and I have two set up. This one specifically is the log analytics. It does, log analytics does require a workspace, and the workspace is relatively simple in terms of how it's configured. Um, for example, if we come back out here and look at the settings of this, really when you're setting it up, it's si as simple as these check marks, you know, what you want to capture. It also, you know, what subscription you want to capture it on. It also does require that you set up an instance of an analytics workspace. And it's relatively cheap in terms of the, the amount of dollars that are spent on a pay-as-you-go type thing. So in that, I'm going to come back out here and look at this log analytics workspace. I'm going to look at my logs. And here's where we start getting into the uh, KQL Custo query. So I have several different queries here. Uh, for example, I can run this one, and I'm looking at Azure Diagnostics, so this table, and I want to see where the where the query or the operation name is query begin. And I can run that, and it's going to grab that data, and it's going to now provide those results. And if I wanted to just drill into one, <coughs> for example, it will tell me what queries or what text data was happening here. It's doing an evaluate, so it's issuing a DAX query. It's giving me a top end. It's summarizing a series of columns. It's let me provide those filters again, those uh, calculated measures. And you know, you start to break this down. Uh, these are just a few things. Again, this is an example of a K KQL query or Custo query. Very, very simple and straightforward. And there are other things if you want to example queries. These are my example queries. There's also a query explorer, explorer that allows you to say if you wanted to save save queries, and I can run this. A, I have a PBI, Power BI query example that I was running uh, later or earlier this morning, and right now it's going out there and grabbing this data, and I could potentially now export this out to a Power M query and paste, copy, paste that into uh, Power BI and the advanced editor and now do analysis on that. I did an example of that. And it was kind of flaky, if you want to use a word. Uh, the, my experience was it was kind of flaky. And, but I can show you kind of an example that it came out as. And it's not, uh, I would not say that it is very visual, but it gives you an example of what you can get back in an MQuery. query. Simply, when you download that, it, it generates a text file that has that MQuery query in it. If you go into Power BI, you say get data blank query. And then once you get into there, you go to the advanced editor and copy and paste that M query in. It will actually issue that query, import that data into Power BI. And now you can actually analyze that data based on what you're, what you're seeing uh, on that. So I'm, hopefully this will render quickly here. And this is an example. And this, I, I'm going to say right now, it's an ugly example, but it's an, an example of me pasting that inquiry that I had previously, and you start to see the text data. So if I wanted to look at the you know various various things here, and I can uh, look at all of that, I can see what's happening in terms of the text. But just to show you, uh, excuse me, transform data. I want to show you this advanced editor. Here's the inquiry that it was generated. I copied and pasted that in, hit done, it drew and did the uh, did the data, and you know the data re renders itself in the table, and then I can look at that and I can actually create Power BI uh, reporting against it. And again, this is kind of a you know a kind of a self-serve option. There's again, there's a lot of tools out there, um, but in the absence of having a tool or having access to a tool, I decided to make my own kind of reporting mechanisms uh, for myself so I can explore the data and potentially provide uh, 
further analysis and get, get to more familiar with what's happening in my uh, environment. So the demo, we just covered kind of the pre recs, which I had to set up logging. I had to set up the log analytics. I had to set up a log analytics workspace. And then as a result of that log analytics, it provides you that um, ability to execute CUSO queries and you can potentially export that out to CSV or Power BI M, uh, M query that you can paste in the advanced editor Power BI and uh, evaluate the data from there. So with that being said, uh, I wanna thank you for attending today. I appreciate you have, spending a few minutes with us today. I hope that you found this uh, session informative. Uh, we Again, we took a look at the, using a few techniques, profile traces, log analytics to monitor and audit analysis services tab here on-prem and Azure analysis services. Um, in this session, we did not cover monitoring on auditing SSAS multidimensional, but for those guys that have an interest in this, I'll work on a session or two of that. and. Hopefully you'll be uh, available to come in and look at that. And uh, with that, we can take some questions with the remaining time. Let's see, I'm not sure. Okay, all right. So I, I'm not sure if there's any questions, Crystal, I'm trying to connect on that or click it and it's, Yes, we can hear you. She'll answer questions. So it looks like there's no questions so far. So if you want to post questions, we can. I think you got a few questions in here, Alan. Um, let me see. Uh, Someone's asking, is the module included in the pragmatic on demand? I believe it's on demand courses. Um, and then another person is asking, I've used log analytics and Power BI desktop, but had some trouble getting to refresh in the service you had. You have tried that. Have you tried that? No, not yet. I haven't completed the service yet. But it will be something floor. Yes, I haven't done it here yet. And what was the? Is it just connectivity? Yeah. And was it throwing uh, errors in terms of like credentials? Because one of the things I ran into, and I don't know if you guys saw that, um, when I connected to this, it required. <laughs> I don't. Let me see if I can connect this. Connect. And connect again. I'll show you this. Let me see if it'll let me drop this down. Okay, it's being cranky, but it required, uh, and, and I don't know if this is true with your organization, but it, on our end, it required multi factor authentication. So it required an additional step. In this case, I did it manually. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to be handled <coughs> through. The uh, service I would I would presume that we would probably need to dedicate a service account that will not necessarily have to go through the multi-factor authentication. Of course, I would have to work with our uh, infrastructure persons to uh, make sure that we're not violating any security protocols. But that's more than likely what I would have to do to get it to work with my Power BI tenant. So, for example, our Active Directory is set up with multi-factor authentication. So what happens when I connect to this, it's gonna say, hey, okay, that's surprising it didn't prompt me this time. Maybe it didn't log me completely out. But when I initially connected to that, it actually said, okay, provide your username, provide your password, uh, then we're gonna send you a text and you need to enter that code. And that was the multi-factor authentication kicking in. Um, not that I don't know if that's what you're experiencing or what you're running into or what specific area you're hitting, but that might be something to explore. Okay. 
Is there any other questions? Because uh, this is what I'm seeing, Crystal. Uh, yeah, you still have quite a few in here. Um, let me see. Let me go up a little bit. Um, would you have? Would you be able to do a session where we go through how to analyze capture data? Are you talking about specific? Okay. Uh, I'll be glad to do anything that would help help anybody uh, with this stuff because this is I know this sounds really weird, but this stuff is really interesting to me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably kind of a geek, uh, everybody. So just a uh, warning. Um, I'm just going to put this in this mode because it's a lot easier for me to see it. I let me come up here and let's do this. Was were it one of these categories specific? Was it command events? Was that the question? Uh, I believe she said capture data. Let me see here. It says, would you be able to do a session where you go through how to analyze the capture data? Yeah, and some of that is what we did here. Uh, I did not necessarily go into a lot of uh, detail in terms of uh, how I set this all up because I had to kind of kind of do the Martha Stewart. Here is the cooked turkey kind of thing. So um, with this data here, for example, I again captured trace data. Here's the trace data I did here. And when I was developing the Power BI stuff, I did an, an import. In this case, I captured trace data to a SQL table and then brought these you know each each one in as an import and then created this data model this is how i was analyzing the data uh that i captured so we kind of at a high level did that i could potentially go through a session that specifically talks about how i did this modeling if that's what's being asked but uh, uh we did in some ways do go through a session of analyzing capture data maybe it's more specific given this capture data what is it telling me and how do I go troubleshoot it? Maybe that's more of the question. I don't know if you're getting a response on that. Um, the next question is how how can we monitor how can we monitor refresh SSAS cube tabular? How can we monitor or refresh? Right? Yeah. this would be i think this would be in your query processing uh category so your trace events that are around query processing is going to be it's going to be in that category and i will also send some links around these types of things because they again these are very in depth uh so you have the query processing trace event category you have 22 different event classes and you may uh let me see if i've got an example of that real quick um, I don't. Uh, all versions I want to kind of show this to you SQL server program trace it so for example, as I was talking about this, and I'll try to kind of show this, this is documentation that's out there. Again, I'll provide my references and the links like this, but if you're wanting to look at uh, certain specific things, here are your categories, and then with each of these, here are your classes. So command, begin, end. I would say that if you're looking for specific, if my, uh, processing is is something that I'm interested in I would be looking at uh, these right here the query processing events category and I would be looking at specifics around uh, where the where this is so uh, this may have have some bearing on it this one may have some bearing on it um, that's pretty much the category I would probably start with. You may have to investigate uh, some different things. This is more specific to queries itself. So when the query started, when the query ended, uh, that's how I was measuring my query execution times. 
this also might, excuse me, this also might have some information that you're uh, interested in too, the progress event category. So this again gives you the event classes that are within that. It will provide, provide progress on uh, events that are since the cubes were last traced. So here it's telling you progress report current. It provides you a progress report on the processing. Current reports include processing remain objects being processed, dimensions, partitions, cubes, et cetera. So that would be your process report, reports event category that I would be looking at. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can do um, one more if you want. Okay. Uh, let me scroll down here. I think. Um, okay. Someone's asking what permission do we need on the server database to perform this? Okay, so but, uh, when we were talking about specifically like profile traces, you need to be part of the server admin. So let's just go take a look at where that's defined. And I'm gonna go uh, out here on my tabular instance. I'm at the instance server level. I'm gonna go to properties. I'm gonna go to security. I must be in that server administrator's role to conduct a profiler trace in this case against my Azure, um, excuse me, my SQL Server Tabular 2016 instance. Likewise, if I go here, properties, same thing. This is my login credential uh, that puts me in the server administrator. So I'm, I have to be in the server administrator group, which basically is equivalent to SA in SQL Server. This is the equivalent to that in analysis services. That's the, that's the permissions you have to have. You have to be in that role. And if we don't have any other questions, I want to wish everybody a great day. And Crystal, I don't know if we have anything else, but uh, again, have a great day and thank you for your time. All right, perfect. Alan, thank you so much for hosting. We greatly appreciate it. Um, as for the recording and everything that I know you guys are asking about, you guys will receive a recording tomorrow in your inbox around noon Eastern Standard Time. So please look out for that. Um, as for any questions we didn't get to as well, uh, we will be posting a blog so you guys can view them there. I want to thank you guys so much for joining this webinar. We hope to see you guys in the next one. If you guys have any questions for me or Alan, please feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to help. Thank you guys. I hope you guys have a good rest of your wonderful wonderful Tuesday. Take care.